train wreck. All right. Hey guys, uh, welcome. My name is Eric Litke and uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why Adidas is here at a uh, campus party. Um, we kind of asked ourselves the same things, but I'm going to answer that in the course of the next half hour or so. Um, it all starts with this guy. This guy's our founder. How many of you guys know that Adidas comes from the guy named Adolf Dossler? Any hands? Okay, two people, three people. All right, good. It's a packed room here. So Adidas came from his name. He was a founder of Adidas, and his whole thing was to make athletes better. Whether it was in 1936 with Jesse Owens, his whole thing was to help Jesse win his four gold medals in the Berlin Games. Or at the Thrill in Manila, when Muhammad Ali fought Smokin' Joe Frazier in one of the greatest fights of all time. He was there at all these great sporting events. Or today, with Lionel Messi, with the four-time um, four World Player of the Year, and win basketball with Derrick Rose who clearly is the best up-and-coming young basketball player in the world, as he was the youngest MVP in the NBA when he won it. All these things have been done around making athletes better. That's what Adidas has started doing, that's what he always has done, and that's what we do today. We make athletes faster, stronger, smarter. So what does that have to do with today? Well, we've always been using technology to improve athletes and help them perform at their peak. And today, it's not just about technology to do that, but it's about the data. And what we want to talk to you about today is what the data's role in sports. Obviously, data is critical to some of the things you already see in sports broadcasts and how they measure and track and, and, and broadcast games. That's critical. But companies like myself, like, like ourselves with Adidas, we're interested in how data can be used to measure performance and help consumers like yourselves perform at their best, or help coaches like uh, Jose Mourinho coach his team at the, at the highest level. <laughs> it also allows us to develop innovations, whether it be around product or services. And finally, it allows us to engage with consumers at a whole different level, through mobile devices, through interactive technologies that we have going on. It's about how we use that data as we collect it. Now, Adidas has taken a very firm stance in this area of data collection in sports with my coach. We don't just seek to, to play in this field, we will lead this field. And we do it through our my coach system. And my coach is an interactive system that allows each and every athlete to measure and, 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 and um, be aware of their results. It helps whether it be a consumer, whether it be a coach, teams or clubs, 
helps you monitor the athlete's performance, measure their performance, and help them get better. And today we're going to talk to you about the highest level of my coach called My Coach Elite. Take a look. This is the revolution. This is how the fast get faster, the strong get stronger, the smart get smarter. This is how great players unleash their true potential. This is the revolution. This is smart soccer. Okay, so thanks very much, Eric, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here to share my passion for technology, and particularly technology in sports. And uh, today I'm here to talk about My Coach Elite, which, as Eric pointed out, is the tip of the spear when it comes to My Coach and Adidas and really integrating technology in what we do. My Coach Elite is a performance monitoring solution made for elite teams. What you just saw before was from the MLS All-Star Game last year, where we actually officially launched the system. And for the first time, we actually had technology being worn on the field by our athletes. The system at the moment is being used by teams like Bayern Munich, all 19 teams in Major League Soccer, and AC Milan, just to name a few. And tonight, I want to talk to you a bit about not only what the system is and what it does, but also how we got there and where we want to go with this technology in the future. But just to start off, I want to pick up on where Eric left off with making athletes better. And this is at the core of what Adidas is about, and it's the core of every product we make. But as the pathways of technological innovation and human performance continue to converge, we have to look at different ways that we can do this. We have to look at what else we can do as a brand to make athletes better. Now, we took our focus on the exterior of the athlete and what they wear, and applied that to what we do on the inside of the athlete. So looking at what's going on with the athlete himself. And that led us down the road of looking at physiological monitoring. Now, this is a little bit outside of the box for Adidas as a brand, but it's 100% in line with making athletes better. Now, what we did next led us down the road of developing the most complex product that Adidas has ever developed. And we started off with this looking at this holistically. So we wanted to go out and understand from a big picture exactly what it is that the teams and athletes do to achieve peak performance. And this came to life through a huge amount of research. So we went out, we went around the globe, we talked to a huge amount of different teams. We talked to athletes' performance, who are the leaders in integrated performance training. We worked a lot with AC Milan and the Milan Lab, who are widely considered to be the most advanced team in the world when it comes to physiological monitoring. We worked with the Spanish national team, we worked with Ajax, at their MyCoach training facility, which you can see in the picture here at the Tukumst in Amsterdam. We worked with a lot of MLS teams. We worked with Real Madrid and Jose Mourinho. We worked with Chelsea. We also looked outside of football. So we went down to Australia and New Zealand. We worked with the All Blacks. We worked with Aussie Rules football teams. Down there, it's a hotbed of innovation for athlete monitoring. So we really wanted to go down there and learn from them and make sure that we weren't just looking at football and we were covering sport as a whole. What we found was that it's scattered. There's a lot of different technology, there's a lot of different sensors, there's a lot of different stuff going on, but none of the teams are really 100% happy with what they were using. We had some teams using five to six different systems, manually taking all that data, putting it into huge spreadsheets, and generally it was a really inefficient process. We also found that the athletes, in general, hated wearing whatever it was that these systems had them to wear. So whether it was a heart rate strap that kept falling down, whether it was a bra-like harness that holds the device, these guys really, really didn't like wearing it. And we came back with all this information we collected from around the world with all these elite teams, and we thought, hey, we can do this better. We have the means, we have the desire, it's part of our history to innovate in sport, and we can do this better. We can enable coaches and athletes to understand themselves better by providing them with more information about how they perform. Now, how we approach this as a brand is, as Eric mentioned, we take a three-pronged approach. And in the context of My Coach Elite specifically, we look at performance in terms of enabling coaches to understand their athletes better in a scientific manner. We look at innovation 
by leveraging the data that we're collecting with those teams and applying it elsewhere within our brand and our product ranges. And we also look to engage our consumers. So we're looking at how we can use MyCoach Elite and the technology we develop here to engage fans at a different level and bring them closer to the teams they love. Now, all that being said, performance is everything for us. And our focus is on making sure that the tools we deliver to these teams are the best they can be, to make sure that they are at peak performance. To do that, and out of the research we did, we had a whole bunch of criteria that we had to meet. And the major ones were, first of all, it had to be easy to use. From end to end, from the athlete being comfortable to the analyst having the right information in the right format to understand it. On top of that, we had to cover the core metrics in one system. So we had to have position, we had to have speed and distance, we had to have acceleration and deceleration, and we had to have heart rate. So this together, making that easy to use and manage was a big focus of ours in the first place. On top of that, we had to track total training impact. Now this is something that's considered somewhat of a holy grail in terms of trainers and sports performance. They want one number that tells you exactly what your athletes are going through. One number that tells me whether my athlete is good to go or he needs to have a rest. Now, we haven't found the holy grail by any means, but by all, all accounts with the teams we work with, we've gone a long way to providing it. And that's through measurement of power. So we actually took a leaf out of cycling's book and applied the theory of mass times speed times acceleration, which gives you power and a wattage, to actually give you one number of how an athlete's performing. And we do that by providing relative power. So we offer trainers the ability to set a threshold, which you can then compare an athlete against, give a percentage, and therefore compare two athletes to each other directly in terms of the actual mechanical output they give. We give efficiency. So we look at your mechanical output versus your body's response, so heart rate. So the higher the power, the lower your heart rate, the more efficient you are moving your body at speed over a certain distance. The cornerstone of all this is that the data we collect had to be rich and accurate and it had to be in real time. And to enable that in terms of making it easy to use, having all these metrics in one place, it had to be at the cutting edge of technology. So we had to make sure that all the sensors, all the chipsets, all the fabrics, everything we use was at the cutting edge of what's available. These teams use the best of the best and they're looking to squeeze the last bit of performance they can out of their athletes. So they really must have the latest and greatest. So we understood the big picture of what this thing needed to be. We had to go through these details and refine and define them. And what came out of that was MyCoach Elite as it is today. And you can see it here. It starts off with this TechFit Elite base layer. This sits under the top. And it's a pretty smart piece of equipment. It has fabric heart rate sensor sitting in here. And you can see the line down here. These actually then sit on the rib cage. And the fabric sensors pick up the heart rate from the athlete. And the focus of this shirt was really on making it super comfortable. And believe me, I've worn this thing, I've tested it. After one minute, you don't even know it's there. And that was key to this. Like I said, these guys are used to wearing heart rate straps. They hate wearing anything that's not comfortable. And this went a long way to solving those problems. Now what you see sitting in here is the player cell. So this device actually plugs into the pocket on the shirt. It's small, it's ergonomically designed, and it's a smart piece of equipment. It has a GPS, magnetometer, accelerometer, a gyroscope and it helps us to measure speed, distance, acceleration, and pick up heart rate off the body. Now, the next piece of the puzzle is the base station. So each player cell, and there's 30 of them in each system, communicates wirelessly via RF to the base station, and in there, it charges the cells, it syncs them, and obviously houses them when you're traveling. There's an embedded PC and a router as well, which sends data to the dashboard. Now, the dashboard, is on an iOS device, so it sits on an iPad, or iPad mini, or iPhone if you like, and it displays the data. So on there we have single athlete data, and we have data for the team across all the different metrics we measure. It also enables coaches to set drills, alerts, targets, set down markers, which helps them to actually mark their data and make it more valuable for when they come back and do the analysis. And that's the last piece of the puzzle here. So once all your session's finished, you then go back and all your data is available online to be analyzed and reported on. And just to give you an idea of how that all fits together, as I said, we have the, the player cell here, which com communicates wirelessly to the base station. 
then via Wi-Fi to the dashboard. And from when it happens on the body, on the athlete, to when that data is displayed live on the iPad in the dashboard, it's less than a second. So this is, it's not real time, it's near real time, but we actually had to slow down some of the metrics to make sure that they're usable and useful to coaches when they're displayed to them. Because we had to make sure that on this dashboard, and it's a big focus of ours to make sure it's usable on the field, is that that data is displayed in a way that doesn't get in the way of them actually coaching out on the field. Once the session's finished, the player cells get plugged into the base station, the live data recording, as well as that that's been recorded on an SD card on the chip, is then merged for the sake of accuracy, and within half an hour, once it's plugged into the internet, it's available online for analysis. So, the really big part of this, and what makes it special, is the way that we take large amounts of data, turn that into usable and useful information by displaying it in the right way, and in a way that coaches can actually make sense of it out in the field, and adding that to the knowledge of a coach. So this is not really about replacing coaches, and we get that a lot. Everyone thinks technology is getting in the way, and coaches, you know, we're trying to replace coaches with technology, but that's not what this is about. In fact, it's the exact opposite. We're just enabling coaches to have an objective benchmark from which they can make more informed decisions. And this is something that's really helpful. We had Jose Mourinho working with us in the prototype of the stage of this, this project, and he, what he said really summed it up nicely. And he said, I use my eyes and my heart, but this, this will help me. This is a really big point of confirmation for us because it showed us that we have a coach who he's all about gut feeling. He's about what he sees, he's about understanding his players. And all of a sudden, he has a tool in front of him that allows him to make more informed decisions based on real facts. And we knew this had value. We knew we were adding something to what he did. And we knew we were going in the right direction. We're also adding value to teams through constant development. We're always developing new features. We're improving the UI and the UX. We're adding more sensors to the shirt. We're looking at having respiration sensors in there so we can see breathing rates. We're looking at improved algorithms to improve accuracy. We're even looking at bringing the ball into the game so we can look at player interactions and movement on the field. Now, we have an eclectic team of people working on this day in, day out. So this is something that's not going to stop. It's not something we just put, on, put out there to teams and let them go away with. We're continuously improving. And we want this to be the end all and be all of systems. That being said, we also have to look at other ways that we can deliver value. Yes, we're about athletes and we want our teams to get better, but how else can we deliver value for the system? At the moment, we expose data in a way that's usable and useful for coaches, but how else can we expose it to be useful for another purpose, another customer, or another experience? And the first answer to that is innovation. And innovation is about doing things differently. It's about looking at problems and seeing how can we solve them. Or looking at the information we have and saying, okay, what problems exist that we never even knew about? And with the mindset of Adi Dazla, who was obsessed about observing his athletes and understanding them to better understand their needs, with the information that my coach can provide, we add a whole new layer of information to our innovation teams to use and apply to the products we build. Now, I would have loved to have seen what this guy could have done with a speed profile like this of an athlete that you're seeing behind me. And it's really going to trickle down into all the other relevant products we have. In fact, we're already seeing it on our MyCoach training platform and devices. We're already seeing the work we did on user interfaces to better display data, to better understand data. That's trickling down into devices like Excel that we have coming up, SmartWatch, SmartBall. All of these products are being influenced by what we're doing at this elite level. And that's where the innovation side of things kicks in. And I'm really excited to actually see what comes out of this. It's a super interesting space, and I, I really think it's going to change things. I also think this next topic is going to be something that's exciting for us, and that's engagement. Now, this is about thinking how we utilize data in a completely different context to what it was designed for. How we engage the consumers of not only us, but our teams as well, to bring them closer to their teams they love, to give them something to interact with, something to engage with, something that's completely new. And we know that sports technology is erupting. There's a whole lot of stuff out there. It's becoming more and more dynamic. It's growing really fast. And there's a swath of apps and games, training platforms, you name it, fantasy leagues. It's all out there. 
It's all about content. All these things run on some sort of sport data. And they're all, they're all about interaction. The problem is, is that the content has been the same for so long. So yes, it's statistics and, and data have been the staple diet of all sports fans for decades and decades, but it hasn't changed. There's been nothing new. And we looked at this and we thought we could bring something new to the game. We think the MyCoach Elite platform and this sort of technology really has the potential to add an entirely new layer to what we do to engage fans in stadiums, at home, wherever you like. It adds a whole new dimension to the way we think about sports fanaticism. Imagine being able to understand how fast someone is, how powerful they are, what speeds they're reaching, how many sprints they do, how they cover the field, how they interact with the ball. All of that live in front of you. It's really amazing when you think about it. This stuff is going to happen, and we're on the forefront of making it happen. We're looking at using this data in telemetry apps, in games, through augmented reality, and in smart stadiums. We've been in a stadium and shown live data from the field on over 500 screens and mobile phones. It's been done. And let me tell you, when you're there and you have this data, it's happening on the field in front of you, and you get a completely new world of data being, being shown to you, it's something special. Imagine having Leo Messi in the last three minutes of a World Cup final. All of a sudden, you have an insight into what this guy is feeling, what he's doing. We can see how tired he is. We can see what he's going through. We can see whether he has that last bit of energy to make that last sprint to score the winning goal. And with things like the ball in there, we can say, okay, how did he hit the ball? What was its trajectory? What was its spin? This is all stuff that is possible. Imagine football video games powered by real data. All of a sudden, the speeds are real. The athletes are real. Their fatigue levels are real. Everything that this system produces can be turned into something else and made useful and valuable for another purpose. And for us as a brand, it comes down to this one really simple equation. We're a unique brand, and we have a desire to innovate in sports. We work with unique and amazing teams, and with My Coach Elite, now we're producing unique insights about these teams. And in this, there's opportunity. We have a rich history in sports, a desire to innovate and deliver groundbreaking products, and this has resulted in a new platform to engage our consumers and improve our products. We have the opportunity to change the way we think about sports from a performance point of view, from an innovation point of view, and from an engagement point of view. And My Coach Elite is an innovation in and of itself. It breeds innovation. It breeds poss possibilities. You're going to see the benefits of this sort of technology trickle down into the products that are on the shelves, and teams are going to benefit it by improving their performance. We're actively engaged in projects to make this stuff a reality. Yes, there are hurdles, there are things we need to do, and it's all looking towards the future, and it sounds very easy here, but we have the passion, the desire, and the want to go ahead and make these things a reality. And while some of this might sound a bit far-fetched, I'm telling you right now that this is the future of sports, and it's coming much, much sooner than you think. So I hope you guys got a bit of insight into what we do at My Coach Elite and where we're going with this stuff. And uh, I think we'll hand over to Eric to, to finish up here. Thank you. Well, you stay up here. We, we, we take some questions. OK, guys, I, I mean, I started off by saying uh, it's kind of strange in a sports brand. Is that a uh, campus party or a tech summit? But I think you guys now see the future that we're trying to define and the use of data in sports. And um, we're very excited about that area, not just from a, um, a commercial opportunity, but also from a usability. So if you guys have any questions, whether it be from the technical side of my coach, uh, Matt uh, can answer, or just anything on Adidas in general, please, uh, this is your opportunity. So. <coughs> uh, hi, uh, thanks for the speech. It's a very good animation. Uh, I, would like, I, I, would ask, um, I would like to ask, uh, uh, when you say that you are not going to substitute a coach, you say that it's the, Jose Mourinho has said I have my eyes, my heart, but it's going to help me. Uh, why? Why aren't you going to substitute a coach? That, that's a, I think um, 
I am very interested in, in parameters in sport. And I think that a coach, it's something that in the future is not necessary. Why do you think you are not going to substitute a coach? Something that a coach has told you is because the coach is not the one to lose her, his job. So why not? So I, I think I'll take that one. Um, and I'm, I'm going to disagree with you off the bat. You went dead. Check, baby, check. Here. Yeah, you do the hand mic. Okay. Can you? Okay, so I'm going to disagree with you off the bat. Um, as I said, technology like this adds an objective layer to the understanding of a coach, and the fact is, is that regardless of how good technology gets, is sport is about people. And people have different personalities, they have different ab abilities, they have different ways of using their body and thinking about things and actually enacting the physical attributes they have or the tactical and mental attributes they have. And in a lot of ways, a coach's job is actually about managing that. Now, the more we can do to add knowledge to that, objective knowledge, the better, because that helps them to make more informed decisions about an athlete. It may well be that a coach has a gut feeling that that guy is done, he's tired, he's dead, take him off. But we can show on the data that he's not. And I, I would only add one thing is, it can replace a coach when it comes down to a personal coach. There's millions of runners that have been running with my coach right now, going through training programs that is my co using co my coach as a personal coach. So I think yet we, have to, we have to differentiate between the team side exactly. that the elite team systems use for and other devices we have within the my coach portfolio, like, um, like the pacer and the, like the speed cell and some of the apps we have on iPhones. Those are things that you can easily coach yourself to a better 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, whatever your needs are. And whoever, whatever you're, wh wh even if you're just trying to stay fit and, and happy, there's plenty of personal coaching that's available through that. Just when you go in a team atmosphere, it's more than just data. It's got to be put together in a, in a teamwork. And I think that's what Matt's trying to express there. Exactly. Uh. Yeah, hello. Um, you had a great presentation and all. Um, I would like to ask something. Um, this shirt, is it available for um, common populations or only for the teams? Will it be uh, available in shops, in stores? Uh, at this point, it's not available to um, dis open distribution. We are making it as part of an elite team system, so the, the, my, the my Coach Elite. So right now, we're outfitting all of our federations for the World Cup. So we've got Spain getting their delivery in days. Germany already has theirs. And we'll see who else qualifies. But as we go forward, we really try to keep it that tight. We certainly have commercial plans to bring it to the consumer population. It's just a matter of, not a question of, of if, it's a question of when. So it's a rollout. Active crowd, good. Let's come on. Let's ask them up. We're here all night. First beer's on me. Hi there. You just uh, mentioned the World Cup next year. Will the teams be wearing this during games? It's a great question, and one we're closely discussing with FIFA, as you can imagine. Football is a, is a game of tradition. Uh, I think we can refer to the goal line technology that just now got accepted as being. Uh, uh, so as we go forward, FIFA is very open to using this type of technology for safety. Because obviously you can see when a player is overheating or when a player is in trouble or something. Um, competitively, um, we, we can't, it could never be a competitive advantage. So we're discussing that within the FIFA organization and talking about how we do it. Matt, you may have some other insights on that. Okay, so he said no, um, just for those guys. <laughs> he said I'm perfect and it hit the nail on the head. No, um, honestly, it's a, it's, a, it's a very touchy subject because technology is moving so fast, as you guys can appreciate here, and there are, there are organizations that are still wanting to be more tradition-based, and it's how we bring them into the digital era. Um, again, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when these, these uh, federations, leagues, and clubs come along. Um, since you said that 
that got sent off to Spain and Germany, if it does become successful, then other clubs like want to invest in that. Would it ever be in shops or would it just remain in clubs and teams? We will we will distribute it to any club that's interested. Weren't you just in Turkey? But your teams were yeah. So we've just go ahead, Matt. Matt Matt's the he's the genius of my coach elite. So I'm gonna step aside on that. Yeah. So I mean, obviously at the moment we're we're focused on on our elite teams. Um, it's definitely something that's open for any other club to come out and purchase. And we're also looking at bringing this technology down to a point at which it's more affordable for lower level teams and and clubs uh, to afford and actually benefit from that sort of technology. So. While maybe not yet, and, and we're still at the point where we're servicing the cream of the crop and the elite teams, it definitely will come to a level at which it's going to be more widely available. And that's the beauty of these things. It's, it's, it's very scalable. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the question? Repeat the question. No, because um, you said that like, since if it does become successful, then you will go down to lower clubs. But I was just asking, like, if someone that doesn't play football, would they still be able to purchase it? Yeah, if they're not in a club, that would they be able to purchase that? Yeah, so at the moment, this is really, and we do have devices and products for individuals, um, which measure a lot of the like same the, things. Like the speed cell. Like, exactly. So like speed cell, and we have things like XL coming up. And we, this we, is really focused on the teams. We have a speed cell chip that goes inside our shoes in this cavity here that measures you as an individual when you buy our boots. I don't know if you can see this, but sorry, since it's a smaller crowd, but... You've got this cavity here that holds a chip, and that's called a speed cell. Yeah, it's very light. It make, there's, no, there's no additional weight. So you put that in there, you can monitor your, your speed, your acceleration, your, you know, the, time you, the time you've actually had high activity, low activity. Number of sprints. Yeah, Matt showed a speed profile of an athlete. It can show you all that during a game, when you're walking, when you're running. We put this on, uh, on Messi and all of our players, and we're able to compare them on Facebook. You can compare yourself to your friends. You can get into a bragging rate and, and how, how you share that all through, um, all through Apple and Facebook. So that's available today in stores near you. So that, that, that speed cell device is being carried in any football distributor in the UK or even in uh, Apple stores. Should have brought the whole portfolio. Yeah, yeah you said about all overheating. Like, what, does it ever... Does it have a like limit of time that it will heat up and then kind of like break down or something? Oh. No, no. So I mean, we we're not. This is not a medical device, and it's not something that we propose to be that. But it certainly allows coaches to see measurements on the field from the athletes that can indicate a high level of fatigue. For how long? For how long? I mean, we. In, in terms of the actual like length that they're on the field, or yeah, so I mean this this will measure I mean entire games and training sessions and everything. So you get every single data, and it's you 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 will quit before the system does. Yeah, the system won't wear out. The battery won't wear out. It, it'll and measure your complete activity. And that's measuring it up to 100 hertz. So it's taking measurements 100 times a second in there. <laughs> so it's it's going to pick it up. Hi, uh, thanks for the great talk, guys. Um, I just, I was quite interested in what you said about bringing the football into the context of the, uh, the data and statistics. Um, how do you think the analysis will change when you're able to, to bring that sort of location information uh, in and, and pair it with the performance data of the athletes? Yeah, so this is something we're really looking into, and we, we have the technology to do it. It's just a matter of actually integrating into the system in a way that makes sense. So, like I said at the moment, we're really focused on performance monitoring, and the first level of that is really getting into the physiology of the athlete and understanding exactly what their body's going through. We also have some sort of tactical elements to the system, so we look at positioning on the field and, and tracing and having a heat map of actually where you've run. And that's something we're actually starting to develop out more and we have plans to kind of cover that more tactical end of things and obviously when you have the ball involved in that you're actually going to get a whole new layer of information so you'll actually see how people f have formations so if you take maybe your back three and you you can all of a sudden look at how they work together against the ball and these sorts of things on top of the physiological data you'll actually start to find patterns of how people react depending on how tired they are 
And it's these sorts of things where that really, really gets interesting. And we're looking to really merge this physiological side of things with the tactical. And I, I would add to that as well, we're then looking into the cognitive side of things. So uh, in a lot of ways, the whole package for an athlete is really about the cognitive side of things. So the way you're actually processing the information that's in front of you, looking at the physiological side of things, so how your body reacts to that and reacts to what your brain is telling you to do and how you understand that. And then the tactical thing is how you apply both of those on the field and in the game. So I think we're, we're going to see a lot of things like that. And the ball is just one example. And it's, it's something that's in the pipeline for us and we're looking at. But there's, there's certainly a lot of other things as well that are going to add similar extra layers of information to the way in which we interpret data and understand what athletes are doing, not only from a physical point of view, but also interacting in the game itself and how they cognitively process information. Does that make sense? And, and we're going to, and we throw it over to you guys and everybody else in the, in, in who, that's interested. We're going to provide the data. We're, we're going to lead the world in tracking. But the analysis we, we found is all, all of our clubs and federations we're working with are looking at it slightly through different eyes based upon what they want. Jose may want it one way, but the Milan lab wants it a completely different way. So it's about how they interpret the data we provide. So it's a wide open, brand new field, which is why we were yeah. excited and honored to be invited to speak here because you guys are, are the future of this. So and it's actually, it's hopefully you walk away with, hey, these guys are giving us all this data. Now how can we help coaches, athletes, teams yeah. analyze that data and be smarter with it? Yeah, it's, it's, I just add to that as well in saying that you know a, a big focus of the system is that obviously you do have different coaches and different ways of doing things. So customizability and flexibility in the way we apply this technology is really, really important. So we have coaches that are to the second. You know, <laughs> their drills end after five minutes exactly. And the next drill starts after two minutes exactly of rest. And then we have coaches mostly in Italy and Spain that are just like, Training starts at 10 and no one's there at 11. <laughs> so, you know, we have, to, we have to accommodate for these different styles and different ways of understanding athletes while still delivering that value. Follow-up question, yeah. Um, yeah, since this has been a day of open data all around the place, um, yeah. do you or do you have <laughs> plans to um, publish any of the data and make it publicly available? Another good question. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really good question, and it's, uh, it's definitely something that is complicated, <laughs> let me say that. Um, and it also comes down to teams and their preference. I think we've seen Manchester City last season who've actually started to publish a lot of their data, and, and we'll see what sort of benefits come out of things like that. But I definitely think, you know, in the future, that's the way forward. Um, certainly some teams are very closed up about what they do, and they don't want anyone to know anything. And other teams want everyone to know everything and want people to help them to understand their athletes better. So... I think we're definitely going to get to the point where we're looking at APIs and those sorts of things to actually plug into this and, and build different things off the back of it. Um, in terms of the actual sharing of, of the team's data, I can see it most likely in an anonymous form. Yeah. So the big thing is we work with a huge amount of teams and, and as the system develops and we have more and more out there, is all of a sudden we're going to have a huge amount of information about a lot of different teams and a lot of different things. And when yeah. we start mining into that data and start understanding patterns of not only players in their position, but you know the, the amount of time they spend in certain areas and how their bodies react to that, there's, I think the the possibilities there are it's frightening. I think how the way things are going to go there. But, but we've been we've been pretty come. clear about protecting our individual players, protecting individual teams. But I think the magic's in what Matt just talked about was the aggregation of all that data. And it, then we can focus it against the position, against the point in time, during the penalty kick, during a, during a corner kick, whatever it may be, you can look at data and then slice it many different ways to come up with your own interpretations. It's definitely going to be a team-to-team -team thing. and we'll, it's, a, it's a relationship thing. It's a team-to-team -team yeah. thing. And it's uh, obviously a sensitive topic. So it'll be exciting to see what comes out of that space. So do you have a question now? Anybody else? Sure. Come on down closer. Make it easier on everybody. <laughs> Sorry, um, just one other thing you mentioned earlier that I was quite interested in. Um, you mentioned that you've uh, done quite a lot of um, user interface and user experience uh, development during the course of the app. Could you maybe give us an example of maybe something that's changed quite drastically over the period of development or, you know, just, just an idea of what you're talking about, really. Thanks. 
Yeah, I think on, on that point, there's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of different examples of that. Um, I would say one of them is, and, and this again comes down to this customizability of the system and having different views for different coaches and the way they work um, and, and the way they understand things and also compensating for different levels of understanding the data. So we have teams that have super duper setups to understand data and work with it and, and get things out of it and we have teams where they have one guy who can kind of use Excel. You know, <laughs> it, it, it really it depends and there's, there's a huge amount of difference in these teams. So. In the app itself and in the live data, I, I told you that you know, we did a lot of work on how we display that to make it useful, but useful for one person is not for another. So we have two different ways of viewing data across the team, and, and one is, is on what we call basically a grid view. So it's big tiles and big, bold, bright colors. So for heart rate, for example, is we, we can show that as a, as a relative value, so a percentage. So everyone has different max heart rates we give that as a percentage of max so that I can see, okay, whether everyone is working at the right level. So if I'm doing a conditioning exercise and I want everyone to be working at above 70% of their heart rate, I can see that in big, bright, bold numbers and we have colors assigned to the different zones. So a coach knows just by looking at the color and so you have a screen of athletes and I can see immediately just from the color coding that they're all in the right level and working at the right, in the right area that I want them to be working at. The other side to that is that we then have a list view in there which has four different columns. It's a much more technical view. It's, it's not big, bright, bold. It's just numbers and that's for the more technical guys. So we definitely have a lot of, a lot of ways to, to view data in there. And it ha like I said, it has to be flexible. It has to be adaptable to different coaching styles, different methods and the different kind of things the coaches want to get out of there. And this is, this is a big thing of coming out of all that research we did is that we had to be flexible on that. And we're constantly gathering feedback from all these teams we work with. You know, we, we talk to them almost on a, on a weekly, daily basis even, some of them, to actually refine these things and, and define new ways of displaying things. So it's a really, it's, a, it's an evolutionary process of understanding how we display data. And, and I said earlier as well, it's like we're showing from, from on the body to when it happens and when you see it on the dashboard is less than a second. So some things we actually had to slow them down in terms of the way we display them so that a coach could make sense of them. So it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting space and it's something we're constantly learning and constantly interacting with teams to understand and, and constantly improve. So it's really, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you'll start to see some of this as we work with more and more teams, you'll start to see this interface more and more. It's, it really is quite clean and, and bold and beautiful and, and easy to understand. Get your, get your exercise in. Thanks. Um, if it's not a secret, uh, what is the price of the whole system? With example 30 of... Is it a secret? It's a secret. It's a secret. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't disclose that. Okay, no problem. It's uh, expensive. It's expensive. That I can tell. <laughs> uh, another thing. Um, do Will the clubs who aren't sponsored by Adidas be able to use this, this technology? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Thank it's, you. it's open to all clubs, and as, as Matt said earlier, we will take it down into where a local club in, uh, in, you know, in, in London can, can buy it as well, maybe at a scaled down area. So the same componentry was missing some pieces here and there. So there'll be a, a suite of products at the very elite level down to um, the basic level. But we want to put this in the hands of everybody, whether you're a weekend warrior or you're a Premier League player. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, then. Thank you very much for your attention. Appreciate you guys coming.